Hey everybody, what is going on? I'm Alexander Williamson here with The Secret History, Living in Your Aquariums. So, I want to talk to you today about something that has been on my mind lately. And it's something that I feel like is a lie, or at least a major lack of detail that most people who keep aquariums may have no idea that they're missing. And it's not a nefarious lie. It's not that people like uh, Aquarium Co-ops Corey or KG Tropicals or King of DIY or any of these people, uh, Dustin's Planted Tanks back in the day, any of these people who have these great channels uh, that are instructive on how to keep your fish, it's not that they're trying to lie to you to deceive you or anything like that. It's that the living world is incredibly complex and there are so many different ways for things to be accomplished. Basically, everything that happens in your aquarium has to happen in a small glass box, and they're all processes that normally take place out in the open in giant lakes and rivers, and there's uh, you know thousands of feet of bedrock and sandstone and uh, you know quartz or whatever it may be, and then there's mulm, and then there's uh, fill soil, there might be glacial till, there might be, you know, who knows? There's all these layers and all these details all around the lake or the creek or river where your fish are found. And so a lot of people have told you that, one, you have to cycle your aquarium. And I'm going to tell you today in just a moment, you do not need to cycle your aquarium. Not now, not ever. Now that's ill-advised, and I'll explain why in a moment. But your fish can survive and, yes, even thrive without any of the beneficial bacteria and filtration. <sighs> you also do not need a filter. And a lot of people out there right now are claiming that they keep tanks where they don't do water changes and they don't have filters. I have called my tanks filterless as well. And they claim lots of people, different channels, different books from Diane Walstead, where she had kind of a holistic ecosystem nature tank with uh, soil and dirt and plants and no filter that is electrically run or mechanically run. She had a system that has kind of been ascribed as the Walstead, Walstead system now that works and you can keep your fish in there. It, it cycles and over time, it, and it takes a little more time, it is a sustainable way to keep fish. Now, I also want to tell you that not just filters, filtration, uh, water changes, water top-offs, there's ways to avoid just about anything in this hobby if you want to. And some people see that or they see a headline and, and just like John over at KG Tropicals pointed out, they think, oh man, that's really easy. I'm just going to stop doing this or that. And in this day and age, a lot of people will see a headline and they will, or the name of a video, and they will not even watch the whole thing. They'll watch half of it. They'll watch while they're playing, I don't know, Sudoku or, or whatever, some other thing, uh, or they're driving down the road and they're going to miss the point. And so for this subject, I need you guys to really pay attention because if you do pay attention to this video, I think I will completely change your perception of what it means to take care of fish and have an aquarium with plants, to have an ecosystem, and to have it in a little box. Now, the reason you think that things need to be filtered, and there's even arguments over, should it be a sponge filter? Should it be a canister filter? Should it be an under gravel filter or anoxic filter or a plenum or, you know, what? There's all these options, right? And if you're brand new, those might, that might even be way over your head. But if you've been in the hobby a while, you've probably heard of these things. Maybe you've checked them out. But I'm here to tell you, you don't even need to do all that. Your fish can survive without all that. But the problem is they're in a little, little tiny glass box and compared to the giant world that is an ecosystem and nature, they are not going to have very much room for error if you mess up with keeping their 
water parameters and the conditions they evolved to survive in within a certain range. And it's because of that, as well as the fact that there are certain products, there are certain procedures that people know across the hobby as the probably the easiest ones to do to address these issues, that the channels like Aquarium Co-op and Corey, he says, you know, this is how a, uh, a cycle works. This is how the nitrogen cycle works. Well, I'm here to tell you that the nitrogen cycle, yes, it works. It's a thing. But there's also a yeast cycle. There's also a carbon cycle. There's also a cycle that in highly acidic waters, you can't actually have ammonia build up. It evaporates out of the water in black water tanks under around 6.5 pH. And it then converts and bonds uh, differently and becomes ammonium, which is far less harmful, kind of like nitrates and nitrites, with nitrates being safer than nitrites. So there is a whole world that I'm not going to cover in this video, but I do want to flip a couple things on their head, and I do want to kind of uh, clear the room and reset your understanding and maybe your uh open-mindedness to trying to learn more about the natural processes that are going on in our aquariums and the titles that people give things and the way people kind of sell things as, you know, this is the way you need to do it or this is the best way to do it. And I'm going to say this because I've said it before, but there are many ways to keep an aquarium. And, you know, I, I'm not going to say any of them are the right way, but there are many good ways to keep an aquarium that are different. And only a few that are the wrong way. So there are so many ways to keep things that I'm not, I'm not uh, raining on anyone's parade, any channel. People like Father Fish or Lucas Bretz who say they have filterless tanks, though. I'm here to say today that I've said, okay, I'm ha I have filterless tanks. Let me turn this. I say this tank right here, it's never been plugged in. It's never had a light on it. It's never had uh, any food added to it since I set up the tank. You know, I put scuds and worms and all sorts of little life forms and shrimp in here for a month. Then I threw the fish in uh, with plants and everything. Then I put it in the windowsill where it gets indirect light and boom, it's supported three of these gold barbs. Actually, I started with white clouds and I couldn't see them well enough, so I took them out a month later. So for 11 months, this jar here has supported white clouds. And I call it filterless, heaterless, lightless, no-tech tank. But I've even been lying to you guys. This tank has a filter. It has several filters. It has snails. They're filtering the water. It has plants. They're filtering the water. It has hardscape. So you can see it's got mulm. It's got rocks. It's got all sorts of things in there that are surface area. And all your nitrosoma, your nitrobacillus, that all, all your beneficial bacteria that is part of the cycle, that exists on those surfaces. And it is happening. It's just happening slower and with less area than would be going on in, say, oh, I don't know, a tank like this one, where we have a big canister filter, and in here we've got sponges and just endless amounts of surface area uh, compared to that little vase that can only support three or four fish. And in this tank, we've got all these plants, which actually I got just got back from Florida, need to cut them back because they're taking over and crowding out the room for my poor angelfish. But in this tank, I, I have a big filter uh, set up. I have uh, it set up so the outflow aerates the water and moves it around. I have a heater over here. I have... Uh, that giant filter that's down there and I've got all the filtration of everything that's in the tank that's growing naturally. So what does that mean? It means that this tank is extremely redundant in its filtration and yet I'm still telling you in a moment I'm going to tell you a way you can have a tank that is not filtered. 
That means literally a glass box with no plants, with no hardware or sponges or anything, and you can still have healthy, happy fish. But it's not very fun. So let me finish up talking about this, and then we'll get to that. So what you need to know when you're setting up these so-called filterless tanks is that they still have filters. They're using plants. They're using surface area and hardscape. They're using things like snails and things like uh, cleanup crews, fish, shrimp. All of that works together to lighten the load and to basically you're changing one or two variables at a time and you can decide, okay, I want a stronger light. Well, then those plants are going to grow faster and they're going to suck more of the nitrates out of the water. Uh, you can also decide that you want to add nitrates. You know, you want to uh, have the plants grow even faster than what fish are doing. And that's where fertilizers and things come in. Back to this vase over here. When I set it up, I had to pack it full of carbon and uh, aquachar. By the way, I'll link this in the description because this stuff's pretty cool. But this is fortified with nutrients and it is charcoal uh, or activated carbon. And you put that in your substrate in this. Look at this, how deep this substrate is. That is because I'm getting filtration going on here. I'm getting cyanobacteria or blue-green algae growing here. And let me get my handy dandy flashlight we're getting all sorts of different life forms from algae to cyanobacteria to uh, these bubbles which are giving away that there's some sort of process going on with either uh, fungi or archaea and all of this is going on look how deep it goes on in in this substrate we're probably six seven inches into the substrate from the surface yet there's gas bubbles so this is where you see things like sulfur and things like CO2, uh, carbon monoxide, uh, sulfur gas, all sorts of different things going on. And this is where people like uh, Dr. Novak, um, as, as he calls himself, uh, Dr. Novak's method of the BSB uh, baskets and plenums and things under gravel filters, they say that they're taking advantage of all this area that is so deep in the substrate that you don't need mechanical filtration plugged into the wall to do things, that this will handle it. And if you have a little bit of iron and a little bit of sulfur, that there are other forms of bacteria other than the nitrosoma and nitrobacillus that we're used to putting on uh, filter media and running through oxygenated water. Well, this stuff goes on in low oxygen or non-oxygenated water. But think about a fish show where you go and you see them showing the most beautiful cichlids and bettas and gouramis, things like that, okay? Here's a gourami. So... <laughs> They are in glass containers. They might be in a glass box with absolutely nothing in it but a little bit of substrate or maybe even just some glass beads or something at the bottom, not even active substrate that's organic. Yet those fish are healthy and they're doing well. As long as there's not chlorine or toxins in the water, water is water, and if there's no ammonia built up yet from the fish going to the bathroom, they can hang out in that for days or however long it takes for them to build up ammonia into a unhealthy byproduct. So as long as you're changing that water every few hours or every few days, it really just depends on your fish load, you do not need a bacterial biological filter. You do not need plants. You do not need anything. Now, beyond that, just like I was saying, with ammonium and ammonia... If your pH is under 6.5 or so, this tank is right around 6.0, you can keep fish that in the wild, they rely on yeast and other bacteria other than nitrobacillus and nitrobacter because the plants can't actually get that out of the water because ammonium is not what the plants want to eat. They want to eat ammonia or nitrites or nitrates. So what happens? Well, look at this substrate. So this substrate here, 
it has to go down to a level where the oxygen can't reach it. So I've put silt in this tank and below the silt, you can see this oxidized layer of iron, this orange layer. And below that is where there is sulfur and iron that I put in the substrate five years ago now because of reading I did about uh, some filtration that goes on anoxically and anaerobically. And now when the roots reach that layer, they actually have a whole different set of bacteria that turns the nitrogen and the ammonium back into ammonia. But because of the cap of sand and the cap here of silt and mulm and just time of compressing it into a, a dense silt, it doesn't get breached. And so that locked layer of nutrients can be accessed by the plants. Now, even more than that, the plants can sit on top of the water and they can access the light. And you can decide with how much light you have, whether they're going to be eating lots of nitrogen and nitrates and nitrites, ammonia, or whether they're going to just be kind of puttering along. You can decide to enrich that. You can add CO2. But when you have floating plants, look what's happening. These ones are actually burnt out because of the fact that they have uh, not enough nitrates. They can't even grow any bigger or faster. The ones that are over in the shade, they're doing okay, but the ones that are under this light, which is by no means a highlight, it's not like this is burning these plants by any means, they just simply can't get enough nutrients. And so they put out these long, long roots compared to all the other ones, whereas you look and try to find back here, look at how short the roots are on this water lettuce. It's not trying so hard. It's only a little deficient. So it's up to you in your systems which variables you want to learn about and which ones you want to dial up or dial down and the impact thereof. And it's different for every single person and how you want to keep tanks. Maybe you keep cichlids and uh, you don't want plants in your tank. Maybe you want hang off the back filters and that's plenty of filtration. Maybe you have a fry tank and uh, you don't want any filter or anything on it. Well, in this tank, Sorry to tell you, there's a filter. This is not filterless. That wool, that, that, that uh, spawning mop, and the algae in here has become a filter over time. So it's not truly filterless. It just doesn't have a mechanical, plugged-in, electronic, or biological filter that's in a nice little package like this. But it does exist because nature always finds a way. Now, if this were brand new and I scrubbed it all, we could still put fish in there for a while until the waste built up and it would be filterless. But my point is you need to decide with all the methods out there. And if you're interested in learning about these things like black water and the low pH filtration or, you know, uh, under gravel plenums, uh, under gravel filters, uh, bog filtration, um, normal aerated nitrosoma and nitrobacillus uh, filtration or no filter, whatever you want to do, you need to search out that information. And on my channel, I try really hard to find science as well as practical examples of it going on and show it working. Now, here's a tank that I think looks pretty darn ugly. There's been no filter running for a while now. And it's a tank that is full of cichlids and African fish that need pretty hard water. So the low pH thing isn't going to work. I could run the filter and that would be the normal solution. However, just to prove how much filtration you get out of your walls and your algae and your mulm and your mosses and things, because this water is so alkaline that not even the plants are really growing. They're basically holding on by a thread. The only thing that's living in here is really the thick uh, Claudiflora algae and a little bit of moss, yet the nitrates and nitrites are undetectable in here, and the fish are doing just fine with no filtration that's uh, plugged in of any sort. It looks dirty. I could scrape this, but I'm not going to because the algae is what's protecting the tank. That is my buffer. That is my oopsie, I screwed up proof layering as well as the substrate which now look at this 
you can see where the mom has settled and then where the oxygen layer and unoxygenated layers meet. And if you set up your tanks right, you can use any one of these variables to be the thing that is the, the lever or the switch that you pull or push, however you want to think of it, to cause your tank to change. And you can remove a little bit of this and raise a little bit of that. But most channels are not going to tell you about that because they're worried you're going to get confused or they're worried that it's too complicated and there's just too many things at play and it's easier to give these broad rules and broad um, you know, statements of you need filtration or you need that the tank to be cycled before you put fish in or all tanks end up cycled or my tank's not filtered even though their tank is clearly filtered organically all over. It's not a filterless tank. There's filtration all over. We just need to change the way we think. So with all this in mind, I hope that you will consider following uh, my path. I'm not saying I have the correct one or the only one, but on this one, we're going to try to keep exploring on this channel all the different ventures and paths that are possible for all these different variables be it a planted tank with co2 and highlights and all the uh, you know ei dosing of fertilizers or be it the most quote-unquote neglected seeming tank in the world but i need you to take away from this is that just because i have a tank that i say is filterless or that i'm not doing water changes on that doesn't mean that it is easy. In fact, those tanks, I've probably spent far more hours researching and learning about these processes in than the ones that I have a filter on. And I would suggest you do the same too and find what's right for you and find what works for your lifestyle. I have to travel and leave my tanks a lot. So I want tanks that can support themselves as an ecosystem, but also look okay because my wife is here and she wants, you know, pretty angelfish to look at. So I want you to rethink the way that you were taught of the fundamentals or the basics of what your aquarium needs. And let me know in the comments things that you once thought to be true or things that you think are true and unchangeable about Aquaria, let me know in the comments if you think you know some of those. And I bet you somebody will have an answer of an exception or something that is nuanced to that statement. But I'd like to see us sharing and teaching one another in the comments of this video. And also, I want to make it clear that I'm not throwing shade at anybody out there who's out there trying to help people keep their aquariums, keep their fish healthy, and have a good time doing it. So whether it's Father Fish, Lucas Bretz, King of DIY, Aquarium Co-op, you know, um, a Primetime Aquatics, KG, uh, whoever, Foo the Flower Horn, <laughs> you know, anybody, um, None of those people are doing anything that I think is detrimental. It's all coming from a good place in their heart, why they're saying what they're saying. I just want to say that once you're into the hobby and you've learned the fundamental basics, let's dig a little deeper and let's get a little crazy. Let's have a little fun. Let's learn the exceptions to the rules, right? Just like in math class when you have to learn the official way to do things before you can start learning the cool shortcuts or using your calculator. It's the same exact thing in this hobby. Thank you so much for watching this far into this insane unhinged video of mine and I hope you guys have a wonderful day and thank you so much to those of you who have supported this channel for six years now, support my travels and uh, the equipment that we get for this channel and stuff and uh, just keep it going the way it is. It's incredible and the fact that it's still growing and you guys are such a positive and well-educated, interesting community of folks. It means the world to me. So thank you for doing what you do. Members, I can't thank you enough. And viewers, people who share, like it, you know, all the things you guys know that helps a video. I can't thank you enough. But I hope you guys are excited for the ride as we progress into the hobby even further yet. Have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.